welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to have our third guest for today. Now we're looking at the 2019 elections, the presidency more importantly. Today we have someone who's a presidential aspirant, is a lawyer, someone who's had over 25 years experience in covering law, consultancy, social and public service with a rich and ever-growing understanding of international developmental issues. Now he's with us, he's running for presidency in 2019, but we're looking at really what are the necessary things, what is the way forward? Where are we coming from? Where exactly are we going to? And who exactly is the person that is Dr. Adeshino Fagbenro Byron? Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Olive. Your name very interesting. Yes. Fagbenro Byron, B-Y-R-O-N. Yes. B -Y -R -O -N. yes. It's, it's very interesting. Well, where it's, are you from? It, yes, it's a compound name. I'm from Lagos State, Lagos Island, Ulubu, to be precise. So it's a compound name. Fagbenro uh, is uh, the, uh, my great-grandfather's first name. And his uh, mentor was Byron. And my great-grandfather happened to be one of the first surveyors of Lagos. And then, so the name is caught on. Uh, part of the family bear Byron, and another part just bear Fagmeru. So you just decided to and have the both of them? <laughs> most of the members of the family bear, bear Fagmeru Byron. Interesting. Thank Good you. to have you. Nice to have me here. Okay, so why did you decide to run for presidency? Well, I, I decided to run for presidency because there's a, a burning desire to uh, uh, actualize a vision I have for Nigeria. I think Nigeria is the best kept secret. Uh, best kept secret in the terms of the fact that we have fantastic human resources and we also have a beautiful country. Um, Nigeria, as well as Africa, has also suffered hundreds of years of exploitation, of uh, uh, reverse development, of arrested development. And I believe that um, the future is very bleak, especially if you look at the trajectory at which uh, both Africa and Nigeria are pursuing uh, in terms of value for human life, in terms of our security, in terms of our livelihoods, you know. Um, I think it's getting to a head where things have to happen. I'm also motivated because of my own experience to have worked in development for uh, quite a number of years, 25 years, um, including um, concentrated work in, the, in international development, working in Nigeria, working with the federal government, working with state governments in Nigeria, providing technical assistance in the areas of governance, in the areas of human development, in the areas of economic growth. And, um, you know, I see at a very close range uh, what should be done that has not been done. I've engaged with virtually every single actor, or most of the actors who have been in governance at the state level, both in the southwest, the southeast, centrally, in Abuja. And, um, well, we know each other. And um, if you know that uh, there is a danger ahead and you fail to do anything about it, then there's a problem. Um, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, Edmund Burke or one of the uh, jurists who says that um, evil prevails when, when good, uh, men. good men refuse to do anything about it. Sure. All right. Yes. Now, one of the evils that it seems to, seems to be prevailing here in Nigeria is the fact that beyond the insecurity yes. and the poverty and the other problems that we have, you know, we have debt as a major problem. Now, yes. the Debt Management Office has shown statistics that in the current administration of President Muhammadu Buhari, we've increased our debt portfolio by 9.12 trillion naira. What is the way forward? What does that mean for Nigeria, first of all, and what is the way forward? Well, 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 well debt is, is, is a negative thing. But, you see, debt also can be positive, depending on what you're expending the monies on. If you're investing the money in a manner that you're building your capital, both human and social capital, human capital, social capital, physical infrastructure, fine. So in another five years' time, you probably catch up with it. If you're investing in innovation, if you're investing in creative property, including intellectual property, then, of course, but I'm not sure whether this government is doing the same. I believe that that debt has arisen largely because of a lot of... Um, weaknesses in public financial management, particularly when it comes to the way we budget, the way we um, ha have our priorities. Um, our priorities are mostly misplaced. Recently, the uh, president handed over $500 billion uh, to Donald Trump with a view to procure um, fighter jets that wouldn't be deliver delivered until 2020. So for me, that kind of mindset and that kind of approach to governance itself 
is, 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 is very negative. So uh, there's cost for concern. There's a need to review our debt profile. There's a need to review the validity of some of the uh, funds that have been um, obtained or secured on the basis of those debts. And there's a, review to, there's, there's a need to review the payment plans. And I believe at the same time, there's, uh, you know, the cost of governance itself has a way we could reduce the cost of governance significantly. Um, we can address things like overpricing. I mean, we look at our budgets. At the end of the day, the budgets are not fully satisfied most of the time because there's not a mon enough money that has been actually drawn down to be able to execute those budgets. Why don't we have enough money drawn down to execute those budgets? Probably because most of the prices on those budgets have been overinflated. Yeah, we're having padding. We've had Absolutely. padding over and over again. So, so that's it. So, you know, the truth of the matter is that we don't have the right, as a matter of fact, in transparency of the processes and lack of accountability has not helped us to be able to, to make a good judgment when it comes to these things. And, I, I, you know, it's like, you know, a basket will always be in debt. Even if, I mean, as long as you're using a basket to fetch water from a river, it will never be full. True. So we've got to plug some holes. All right. You're a lawyer and you understand that one of the rights is enshrined in the Constitution. One yes. of our rights is the right to dignity of human persons Absolutely. and the right to life. Absolutely. We find that this right is being stripped of the Nigerian yes. man. Yes. Daily we see videos on the internet yes. of what is supposedly... Um, a perpetration of SARS, I, I yes, dare say. Yes. So we're seeing people going out and saying they want the SARS to come to an end. Some others are saying we want a reformation. No. But basically, we're seeing little pockets, not even little, lots of pockets of police brutality, yes. which, if not checked, will yes. lead to a revolution on yes. the part of the citizens. Absolutely. What is the way forward? Yeah, absolutely. You see, the point is it's accountability. Everybody must be accountability for the resources and the powers that are placed in their hands. If you issue bullets to a policeman, Right? The proper thing to do is that at the end of the day, he must account for every single bullet he shot, he fired. Here you see policemen firing guns, you know, in celebration of one thing or the other. Or so which means that nobody... Money. Exactly. Or when, the, you know, I mean, when they were rioting the other day in Maiduguri for not being paid, they were shooting guns. That means that people issue bullets to policemen and nobody's asking them how they spend these bullets. In those days, policemen, each policeman on duty must have a notepad where you record your activities for the day. Somebody needs to have oversight of their activities and their conducts. And I believe this, this SARS is supposed to have been an original good intention that has gone totally awry. You see, it lacks accountability, it lacks planning, and it is misapplied. Now, the original intention of SARS is to be a strike force when there's an armed robbery. In process, you have an assault team that will go. You have that all over the world. And they just go in there, deliver the jobs, and the normal and regular police takes over. But now they are used, you know, for every conceivable thing. A husband and wife are fighting, SARS are brought in. So there is no accountability and there is no proper planning. I also believe that our police is over-centralized. I thoroughly am an advocate of state police. I'm an advocate of a police that is conducted and planned well. You can have both state police and federal police in a manner that you create protocols between engagement between state police and federal police. There are state laws. Somebody should enforce them. There is a federal law. Somebody should enforce it. Now, if you say that you want to over-centralize policing, that means you accumulate powers of policing onto a central authority in Abuja. And they say power accumulated, right, Indeed. At the it's, end of the day, it's power that corrupts. I, exactly, because absolute, absolute power, power corrupts absolutely. Is, yes, so Very absolutely, true. there's no way whoever is the Inspector General of Police can be free of corruption. So you're definitely in support of state and community police. Absolutely, All right. absolutely. Thankfully, we're starting to see that National Assembly is making moves in regards, yes. you know, in support of this state and community yes. police. Yes. Now, away from that, let's look at the justice system as well, because you're okay. also a lawyer. And yeah. um, we find that the People, you know, the average Nigerian citizen seem to have lost confidence in the judiciary as much as mm. they should have. Now, we thank, we're thankful for people like um, Justice Banjoko, who is now referred to as the 14-14 judge. Mm. What are the measures that we must take as lawyers, yes. you know, to be able to regain the trust of the Nigerian people? I think the first thing is that we must understand that we are first officers of justice. And there's a difference between law and justice. 
I also believe that lawyers should move away from the, from the, from the form and pursue the substance. You know, there is a way we practice law and there is a way we conduct ourselves that, you know, we focus more on, on the formal and the processes. Now, also the way judges are appointed, what they go through, what is their history, what is their record, you know, how is their processes. It's tending towards being political than being professional, you know. Again, justice is a, is a service delivery. And the justice service delivery, it's a cycle, which starts from investigation. Because to do justice, you must understand the truth. If you are incompetent or you don't have the right, right resources to in properly investigate a matter, you cannot come out with justice at the end of the line because a matter has to be investigated, then adjudicated, then decisions made upon it, and then the right remedies or reprimands should come thereafter. So it is like a process where it's garbage in, garbage out. So in the first place, if the investigative capacity is wrong, and then this issue of accountability and oversight is something that needs to be looked into. There should be some accountability on the part. I mean, the Nigeria Judicial Council and, and some of the processes are working in place and putting in place, but we are not paying as much attention to them. And I think that the, 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 a lot has to do for automation. Right, automation in the justice, in the courts. A lot of people are still taking judgments in long hand. A lot of uh, processes are taking too long. You must condemn a place like Lagos State that has done quite a bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean has no, kind of absolutely, soft, absolutely. The, um, the current vice, the, the current vice president Yemi Oshibajo did quite a bit in, in in working on that. You know, he worked with agencies like mine, DFID, at that time, and we worked with him to provide provided the funding. You know, for quite a bit of what they. They, they did. And then you have to create special and specialized courts. Gone are the days. Take, for example, we have an internet. We, we're in an information age driven by data, driven by information. The evidence, the, court, the, the, the laws of evidence must, must, must be in tandem with the realities of today. So there's a lot of crime that goes through cyber crime, for example, uh, goes through the cyberspace, for example. Do the laws of evidence, do they follow, are they enough to, 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 are they robust enough to capture some of the scenarios you'll find there? So all that, it's a whole raft of engagements and interventions, but you need people who understand these issues. All right, let's move on and talk about people who understand issues Absolutely. that Nigeria is suffering. One of the major issues we're suffering is terrorism insecurity. Now, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, yes. our former vice president, has said that if he comes back, yes. if he's elected as president, that he would stop the terrorism problem that we have, the insecurity issues that we have. Yes. But enough of the talk. Yes. We want to know what the practical steps Nigeria can take you know, what are the steps that we can take to stopping and getting ourselves out of this insecurity problem that we have on our hands? Because we have a crisis on our hands, if yes. we're being honest. Okay, the first thing is, for me, is I mean, if you go to my website, uh, SFB 2019, security and safety are the primary thing. And you have to rejig the security infrastructure. The primary thing about security, the best policeman is the policeman that has a very good relationship with the police, with the people he's supposed to be policing. So I would not, as a citizen, collaborate or work with a policeman that I don't trust. I would not engage or support or collaborate with an army if I believe that army is an army of occupation rather than an army of protection. So first of all, there has to be a relationship between the security agencies and the people they are supposed to keep secure. And then the second thing is security is driven by intelligence. It's driven by information. If you don't have the right intel, take, for example, the $500 million that President Buhari handed over to Donald Trump. 10% of that could be used to buy the necessary kind of information and intelligence to know exactly where these security threats and terrorist threats are coming from. A third issue is that you have to coordinate between all sorts of security agencies. And not only security agencies. You have to consider it, um, uh, coordinate between even banking agencies because terrorists is financed. There's something called terrorist financing. So you have to know where the financing comes from. You have to know how to collaborate. DSS can't be in conflict with EFC, EFCC being in conflict with police. And of course, you have to decentralize security.
Okay, we will restructure yeah, so much, Nigeria, yes. There's so much we want to ask you, but, you know, we've run out of time. It's been an honor I having know. you. Thank you very, very much very for briefly. Me. Yes. You had a stint in the music industry. Absolutely. Are you still there? I don't have a stint. I'm a born musician. I'm a stage performer. I had my live show at the Museum Center. And if you go to YouTube and Google Shino Fagmiru Byron, you'll see a couple of songs. I'm an Afro jazz musician. I play the guitar, I play the keyboards, I sing, and I compose my own songs. Brilliant. Yes. Wow. I had my first album in 1988. Okay, we look forward to We wish you all the best Thank in you very your much. running. And Thank we know you you're much. running on the, your... You've not done the party, party primaries. No, we haven't had our primaries, but I'm running on the COA party. Subject to uh, our involvement with a coalition, a larger coalition. All right. So there's every chance I become the next president. Interesting. We'll keep and our fingers probably... crossed and we'll see how that pans thank out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, much, you very much. Thank you. To enjoy more of these our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.